Good day, everyone. You're watching Macroga Enterprises. Today's lesson is going to focus on conduits and conduit boxes. So we get to understand exactly how the different conduits have been installed in buildings, as well as to understand exactly how to carry out the different processes when it comes to the first fix or the conduit box when you're carrying out conduit on or in an electrical installation system. So today we are going to be referencing to QCS 2014 section 21 part seven. So which is conduit and conduit boxes. So the whole, the whole idea about this is for us to understand how the different components will be able to use them. And then also to ensure that while we start carrying out our different first fix or carrying out the conduit and conduit boxes, we should make sure that we get approval from the consultant prior to carrying out the different installation works on site. So um, the whole idea about all this now is for us to get to understand how projects or the different installation works in different projects works out. And then also to make sure that we get approval, submit the necessary documents. So we get approval from the consultant prior to carrying out the different installation works. It could be different services. It ranges from fire alarm systems, lighting control systems, access control systems, um, small power systems, etc. So I'll take us now to QCS 2014 section 21 part 7, which is electrical works, which is focused on conduit and conduit boxes. I'll drive us through the table of content. We'll move to the first part, which is 7.1 general. We have the general reference, references, descriptions, submissions. And we have the different products rigid PVC conduit and fittings, rigid steel conduit and fittings, flexible conduit and connections. Installation, preparation, installation of conduit, installation of flexible conduit and cleaning. So before we dive into understanding how the code wants us to carry out the different installation works as far as conduit and conduit boxes are concerned, we will have to define or explain what is a conduit. A conduit is a pipe for pulling electrical cables in to convey the cable to a particular point, either to a back box for outlets. So in this case now for outlets, we'll be talking of either socket outlets, data outlets, etc. Lighting point, junction box or distribution box, or in this case, we call it the DB. Conduits are laid either surface exposed or concealed and either and could either be of metal or PVC. So we have two different types of conduit. So we might be talking of metal conduit or we talk of PVC conduit. So, and then also it ranges with different sizes. So all the different sizes now will be based on the different project or your project, project specification. So we will be talking of either 20 mm 25 mm, 32 mm, etc. So it moves beyond based on the different projects that you're working on. So when we start talking of um, the PVC conduit, these are conduits that have been installed embedded. So when we talk of embedded, it means the PVC conduit will be put inside the walls and then plastered in such a way that will not be able to see the conduit. So for exposed conduits now, we're using a metal conduit. So we have different types of conduits. Like I did mention, it varies for the different projects. We might be talking of um, a GI conduit or galvanized ion, or probably we might be talking as well of EMT conduit, electrical metallic tubing. On general, the work of this section is integral with the whole of the project documentation and is not intended to be interpreted outside that context. So this now will be like some sort of disclaimer. So we get to understand that when we are carrying out the installation works, and then also when we are referencing to the code, which is QCS 2014, section 21, part seven. So we should stick to whatever is written in the code, not interpreted out of the context of the code. Coordinate the work with all other services affecting the work of this section. 
So we have to make sure that we coordinate with all different services. So when we are carrying out the electrical installation works on site, we have to ensure that we coordinate with the plumbing and mechanical services to ensure that we have a smooth installation works on site. So we have no clashes with different services. The third point, which is related parts and sections are as follows. This section, part one, general provision for electrical installation. And part six, which is cables and small wiring. We have no references. So in purchasing or um, procuring our different conduits, we show reference to the different standards. So we have some British standards here, which we have to refer to in order to procure the different materials or the different conduits prior to bringing to site. Description. This section to include the supply installation commissioning and all conduit works in accordance with the project documentation. This is very important, like I did mention, and I'll always keep mentioning it, it varies with different projects. So based on the different project that you're working on, you have to ensure that the different materials have been approved by the consultant prior to proceeding with the set installation on site. General, point A, light and power circuits, fire alarm, telephone, signal and other low current systems. Wiring shall be drawn in conduit unless otherwise indicated. Conduit system shall generally be concealed and installed in as indicated unless otherwise indicated. So in this case now, we'll be talking of the PVC conduit whereby they are all concealed or embedded. Light and power circuits, fire alarm wiring, telephone wiring, signal wiring and low current system wiring shall each be run in separate conduit and wire way. So in this case, we have to ensure that our conduit that we use for different services should be only for that particular service. And supposing that we have different services to be installed in that location, the code is talking of light, small power or power circuit, fire alarm, telephone wiring, signal wiring, low current systems wiring, shall be run or sh we shall use separate conduit for separate services. This is very important. And then also I'll take us now to, I've done a video on labeling, whereby we carry out different services on conduits or different containments, and then we provide labeling tax so that we'll be able to differentiate, to differentiate the different services that are being installed in that particular building or in that particular location. So while we are pulling cables or wires, we should ensure or we know that it will guide us that, okay, this different containment works that have been done on site, it's for these particular services. So we don't pull small, small power services in a fire alarm conduit, or probably we don't pull lighting cables or lighting wires in a BMS conduit. Cable insulated for two different categories of circuits shall be segregated. So we segregate all the different services or probably if we have, say, for example, we have small power system, we have lighting system, and it come with some sort of different circuit. So we might be talking of R1, R2, or R3, or probably we talk of Y1, Y2, Y3, or B1, B1 B2, B3. So all these different circuits should be pulled in different uh, conduits. So we will, we will be able to understand that these different circuits are running from this point and they are going to this particular distribution board. And also it will aid as well for maintenance purposes. So while we are carrying our maintenance, it will be very easy in order to do that. Irrespective of services, conduit and fitting used shall be we have point one, where embedded heavy gauge rigid PVC complying to this British standard. Where surface mounted exposed galvanized steel conduit as per, we have BS 4568. So we should comply to all these different requirements as per British standard. Where installed above four ceiling and in voids and in voids or in void areas. Galvanized steel throughout the circuit. So where we have four ceiling, 
above the faucet in any countries that have been installed exposed on the surface, we should use galvanized iron or galvanized steel. Where installed above four ceiling and in void. So I made this point already clear. Now we move to the, the next point, which is where installed in flame proof and hazardous areas, galvanized steel should be used. From terminal box to machine, flexible steel conduit. As per BS EN, we have this code or standards that should be followed where we have from terminal box to machine. So in these cases, I'm going to give us, I will show us a graphic so we get to understand that. In these cases, we have conduits that are being pulled or uh, cables that are leaving from a particular junction box going now to a particular machine. In this case, now we use flexible conduit or flexible steel conduit should be used in this case. I'll take us now to a graphic for we have this point where we have the terminal box for machine flexible steel conduit should be used. Okay, in this case, I'll take us to a graphic where we have, in this case, we might be talking of um, these are BMS systems whereby we have a junction box. In this case, now we have differential pressure switches. So we will be using now our flexible conduits that are being used to connect from the junction box now coming to the field device. So we'll move now to submissions. Samples. Cut away samples of all sizes of conduits. Conduit boxes and fittings of each type shall be fixed to a board and submitted to the engineer. So in this case, we when we talk of this engineer, we're talking of the consultant. So we have to provide samples, give it to the engineer in charge in the project so he gets to approve it prior to us now start dealing, doing delivery of the set materials to the project. Data products and the drawing. So all these different submission, we are going to submit a material submitter which will be approved. So I have done a video on material submitters, all the different documentations, the documents that should be found on the material submitter prior to submitting to the consultant for review and approval. I'll take us now to sample board, how they're going to look like. So as you can see here, this is a sample. So we have conduits, and then we have different accessories, which we will be talking of U-boxes, we talk of T-box, and then we have uh, saddles, which are used to clamp the conduits on the wall. And then we have uh, the round covers. After cables have been pulled, now we cover it. And then we have um, our couplers, which are used to couple one conduit to another. We have back boxes here as well, of different sizes which will be put as well on the sample box, taken to the consultant for review and approval. So we have also varieties as well here. These are for PVC conduits. So we label them as such and then submit to the consultant for review and approval. So move now to the products. Rigid PVC conduits and fittings. So we have standards. Point A, conduits, and fittings shall comply to BS4607. So we talked of this already. So, um, and all these different standards should be as well mentioned in the material submitter prior to submitting to the engineer in charge on site. Conduit diameters shall comply to Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation regulation. So like I said, it varies with the different projects. You might be carrying out your project in Qatar, you might be carrying out your project in different countries, maybe in the EU countries, in Africa, for example. So we have to make sure that we follow the standard, the rules and regulation in that country prior to proceeding with the installation works. And prior for, for, for us to move on with the installation works, we have to ensure that we submit a material submitter, which will base on or which stick to the rules or to the code and standard of that different countries. Physical properties. 
So the conduits will have these different physical quantum properties. So we start talking of resistance, resistant to high temperature, non-high hygroscopic, self-extinguishing. So all these different points are going to be laid. And so we see that it comply to the requirements of the different project and as per the code and standard of that different countries. So we have sizes of conduit. Like I did mention, we have different sizes of the conduit, which we have to follow as well. So the code now drives us to explain and give us the different sizes of conduit as well as the conduit wall thickness, which we have to comply to it. Fittings. Conduit entries shall be designed to ensure a watertight joint. This is very important. Expansion fittings type to be approved. So in this case, when we start talking of expansion joints, where we have expansion on in buildings, we have to ensure that we provide expansion joint couplers, which will as well be brought by the, the supplier as well, which have been approved by the consultant. PVC conduit boxes. So we have PVC conduit boxes can be used through PVC conduit raceway system and shall comply to BS 4607. So we don't have to get, if we're talking of PVC conduit or galvanized ions or galvanized steels. So if we are working with galvanized steel, all the different accessories should be galvanized steel. So we are working up with PVC conduit, all the different accessories as well should be of the PVC conduit. We'll move now to rigid steel conduit and fittings. All metallic conduits shall comply to BS 4568 and of class 4 rigid, rigid steel screwed. Screw type having an interior and exterior zinc coating of uniform quality and appearance. Conduit shall not be less than 20 mm diameter size. It should not be less than 20 mm diameter size. So the code tells us that this should be the minimum size of conduit, which is 20 mm diameter size. It should not be less than that. And shall be complete with all necessary threaded fittings, couplings and connecting devices having galvanized. Conduit and fittings shall be manufactured especially for electric wiring purposes when manufactured by a continuous weld process, weld heads, both inside and outside the tube shall be completely removed prior to galvanizing. So we have these different points that has to be followed. And like I did, again, I will still say it again, for the material submitter, we have to make sure all these different points have been um, well-structured as well as they comply to the code and standards. These are for metallic boundary boxes. So we now move to flexible conduit and connections. Flexible conduit, which will comply to BSEN 586-1. So we have to make sure that we comply to this standard. Updated standard watertight PVC sh shaded spiraled stainless steel, spiral stainless steel. So inside the conduit of the flexible conduit, at the outside we'll have it PVC, but at the inside we'll have it um, galvanized or stainless steel in this case. To be of unpacked type for normal atmospheric conditions and known asbestos. Flexible conduit shall be used for the final connection of rigid conduit to be to the terminal boxes of machines fitted with the means of drive adjustment and or where vibration is likely to occur. 
we now move to the installation. So we have to prepare the site prior to installing the different conduits on site. We now move now to set and bends. Conduits up to 32 mm diameter form on site with an approved bending machine using proper formers, guides, springs, etc. So in a case where we have PVC conduits, we now use a proper spring that have been approved as well to bend or to provide different angles or offsets that are being used on that particular location. <clears throat> in the case of uh, galvanized ions or galvanized steels, so we'll be using uh, an approved bending machine that will be approved by the consultant as well. Conduits over 32 mm diameter use coupling fittings. Installation of conduit. Run conduit in square symmetrical, symmetrical lines parallel to or at right angles to walls and in accordance with the accepted, accepted practice. So we have different points here that have been laid by the code, which we have to follow prior to installing or when we are installing, as well as while we raise inspections for to the consultant to come on site and inspect, we have to make sure that we follow the different steps as mentioned by the code. So basically the whole idea about all this is to for us to make sure that we carry out a perfect installation works for the first fix, which entails a conduit and conduit boxes. So while we are installing them, we have an idea on how to carry out the different installation for the different services. First, we have to make sure that all the different conduits that are being installed on site have been installed based on the different services. We don't mix different services and put in the same conduit. Or take us now to different graphics. So this is for PVC conduits that have been installed on the slab. So we have to ensure that we install them and then provide proper rigid supports so that it, we have no bends as well as when we, they are pouring a concrete on them, we will not have any damage and have no obstruction when we are pulling cables or wires through the conduit. We have to fix our PVC conduit as such on this fruit slab or on the floor. And then we provide all the different services to be installed on that particular floor. And then we focus on the ID drawings or interior design drawings to ensure that we provide the different boxes. In this case, these are all floor boxes that we will have um, data outlets. We have um, um, power or socket outlets as well. So we have to position them as per the interior design drawings, put them in with their different respective dimensions. We have a PVC conduit here that have been installed on the wall, which is embedded as well. So like I did mention, all the code set, we have to make sure that all PVC conduits are all embedded or concealed. In this case, these are all galvanized steel conduits that have been installed exposed. So we have to provide saddles, hold them on the wall, and then connect them as well to the boxes or to the back boxes, as you can see and then provide couplers for each and every joint for the different conduits that have been joined together. Then we'll provide adapters as well, whereby when we are terminating the conduits to the back boxes, we provide adapters to hold them firm to the back boxes. In this case, these are EMT conduits that are installed on the slab as well. So we provide the different supports. And then as you can see here, these are all couplers that have been installed to couple or join different conduits together. So we have our conduit as well being installed as such. So while we finish with our first fix, which is the conduit installation, we raise an inspection, get approval prior to proceed with the cable or wire pulling. These are all different fittings that we have. So we have a one-way fitting or one-way round box. In this case, we mostly use this as um, where we have the final point. It might be for light fixtures, uh, Wi-Fi. And then we have um, these angle boxes or 90 degree boxes. In this case, 
we might be having them as well for our junction boxes, whereby we present them as a pool box as well, whereby we might have a certain conduit leaving from one point, and then as it moves to the other point now, we place our angle boxes in order to take the conduit move to another location. This also can act as, um, these are straightaway boxes, which has, we can also act as a pull box. We have a T box, we have a four way box, we have Y boxes, we have U box, we have back entry boxes. And these are also as back entry boxes as well, which we might place them on an open headed con uh, back, uh, box or round box, whereby we'll have our cable pulled and being pulled in these different holes, as you can see. We have adapters here as well. We have our angle fitting here. We have another angle fitting. In this case, we can open from here and then pull our cables. And once we are done, we can cover them back again and screw. So like you can see the graphic here, these are different um, fittings that are being used for conduit. And like I did said again, the code says we have to provide samples, present them to the engineer in charge on site, get approval prior to bringing uh, different materials on site. Here we have flexible conduit that be uh, installed from one point, moving now to connect to, as you can see, this is an A issue, whereby we have differential pressure switches, which are being connected from this point leaving and connecting to the differential pressure switches by the use of a flexible conduit. The same year also we have an isolator which is connecting to an FCU. So in this case, we use now a flexible conduit to connect from the isolator to the FCU. These are our PVC conduits as well, which we, uh, GI conduits which we have installed on the wall. And then here also we have GI conduits and in this case, we have flexible conduits that were installed, which is going now to terminate to our light fixtures. So this is just an introduction so we get to understand what is conduit and conduit boxes. And we reference to QCS 2014 section 21, part seven. For better understanding, go through your code book so you get to understand the different specification as per the code. And then also make sure that you present a material submitter to the consultant in which we have the different test reports for the different conduits and get approval prior to bringing the different materials on site. Thank you. And today you're watching Macaulay Enterprises.